If you're reselling printers or any other larger items such as a printer, stay tuned because today I'm going to be showing you how I package them myself. Hey YouTube, what is going on? Brandon here with another printer reselling video. Today we're going to be talking specifically about how I package my printers and what I've done for the past four to five years and when what I'm changing now at this point with my printer shipping. You can do this method with other items that are not printers but I'm focusing specifically on printers because on this channel this is a new series of me showing you how to sell used printers and what I do to find used printers and sell them on eBay. It's the business that I've created and hopefully you can do something similar to that as well. So the short tutorial video is really for people that haven't really done this before. If you have a method of shipping, this may help you uh, maybe change something within your method because uh, I did start out one way and now I'm going in a little bit of a different direction as of maybe two weeks ago. Now before I continue on, I am going to mention the Best Printers Cleaning Kit. If your printer is not printing a certain color, printing choppy prints, or you have an overall and general print quality issue, this cleaning solution is going to help you clean out your print head and is going to allow for that color to come back uh, just as crisp as when you first got the printer. So there will be a link for this product in the description below. Also, there's going to be a link for the ebook where I explain how I built a printer reselling business. Basically all of my knowledge I put into this ebook and there's actually going to be an update coming up here very soon, if not within a week or two, maybe sooner. I'm really excited about that update. Now this channel is focused primarily on other aspects of printers, but this is a new series where I'm showing you what I do to, to resell printers I find at Goodwill or garage sales. And of course today specifically we're talking about the shipping process. So if this video ends up being helpful, if anything in the video was helpful to you, please make sure to like. If you have any questions at all, make sure to comment below. And if you want more content like this, please make sure to subscribe. All right, so just remember those product links in the description below, one for the cleaning kit and one for the ebook, and there may be some other ones I may throw in here later on in the video. Getting into how I used to ship printers. First printer I sold, I actually ended up taking the printer to UPS and having them do everything from the bubble wrap to the box and everything was done there. And it was a, a Kodak printer five years ago uh, was a very popular printer, especially in the used market. So I think I sold it for around $90 and I ended up taking it to UPS and they ended up charging me about $40 for shipping. And of course I had my eBay fees and I had my PayPal fees. So that really ate into my profit and I made a little bit but not a whole lot. I thought to myself, you know, if I would have found another cheaper method to do this, I really could have kept a lot more of that money. So fast forward, you know, maybe a year later, what I ended up doing was scaling my printer business to where I was selling maybe 10 to 15 printers a week. In Illinois, you are allowed to go to the back of the store and if they have thrown anything out, you can pick it up. I've even, you know, come across an employee. Uh, this is at Party City that I used to go behind the store and I used to get their boxes and use them to ship printers. And one day I came across an employee and the employee helped me load up the boxes into my car. You wanna check your state laws in regards to um, you know, being able to go at the back of a store and dumpster diving basically is what it is. But there's another very popular YouTuber and reseller. Yeah, Craigslist Hunter. He's another popular YouTuber and reseller and he does the exact same thing. He even finds products to sell that are in the trash that are, you know, they're perfectly fine and they're good to sell but for whatever reason the, the store chose to throw it away. So there's those opportunities as well, but primarily what I would look for at Party City is there was rarely ever trash in there, actual trash. All they were doing was throwing away these boxes. So the boxes were clean, there was really no other trash aside from, you know, maybe some products that maybe got a little bit messy with some glitter or something. But aside from that, Party City is a good place to go to, depending on your state laws, to get boxes. So I got those boxes for free. So the bubble wrap I would buy from Home Depot, it was a thin uh, pink layer of, of bubble wrap and I would double that up and pack that in as much as possible all around the box and each one of those rolls I believe went between 15 to 20 dollars. 
and one of those rolls could take me to at least five boxes of separate printers. And so that was my only expense because the boxes were free and the boxes were the perfect size for printers. So that is one very, very good option. Another option is you have products that are being shipped to your home or to your apartment and keep every box, especially the larger ones. You know, stow them away, disassemble them, pack them, put them in storage, and that way you have you know, boxes ready to go that you didn't even have to go to pick them up from behind a store. Now, if you're doing a larger scale operation, you will have to figure something like that out. But that is already an option for you. Hopefully in your state, it's allowed. But as you're gonna see here, a side burner for my smoker, for my charbroiled smoker, and that box was big enough to fit in an Epson Workforce printer, which was a larger printer, and I really was going to need something this size, and this was perfect. Now, I could cover this still with some bubble wrap. It was the perfect size. It didn't cost me anything. I didn't even have to go anywhere. I just had the box and I had saved that box specifically to be able to ship. Now, can it get confusing with the person you're sending it to? Maybe, but I've never had an issue in my entire life where you know, the box said one thing, that it was one thing, and uh, you slap a label on it, and you send it to the person that bought it. I mean, if they receive a good product that is not damaged, they're not, they don't care what the box is, really. Uh, unless you're trying to go down the route of a brand, and you want to have your brand on the box, that's an entirely different video, an entirely different topic uh, that I really won't cover here in this video. But you really want to get creative because the last thing you want to do is go directly to UPS or FedEx or even the post office, unless it's something that's very small, even then they charge you way more. Uh, because keep in mind, when you're selling on eBay, when you're selling on Amazon, eBay and Amazon have made deals with UPS, with the post office, with FedEx, with DHL, with everyone to get the absolute lowest shipping cost. So you never want to go directly to these places because you don't have that kind of relationship. But eBay and Amazon do. So always use shipping labels from eBay and Amazon. And all you're doing when you're going to these places is you're dropping off. You're dropping off, it's your own box that you found. Uh, it's your own shipping label from your eBay or Amazon account. Uh, your bubble wrap, maybe you paid for that. Uh, hopefully there are ways where uh, you maybe made a larger purchase of a larger item and you kept all that bubble wrap. Keep all of your bubble wrap because that is something that is harder to find. I used to be able to find that a lot though at that party city where I used to go. But if you can just save whatever comes your way from whatever you purchase, or maybe you have someone in your household or you have a neighbor or a family member that, you know, they're gonna throw it away anyways, tell them, I'll take that off your hands. You're taking trash off their hands, basically, because they don't have a use for it, but you do. There's no shame in that. It's going to save you money. It's going to increase your profit margins. When, you're, when you are a reseller, that is what matters the most, is your bottom line, your profit margin. Uh, because th these little things can add up and take away from your profit margin. So the only thing you really might have to pay for if, you know, for, for whatever reason you couldn't find bubble wrap, you know, from um, your surroundings, you may have to buy bubble wrap. I will recommend Amazon um, bubble wrap that can be shipped to you. That's, that's probably going to be the easiest. Um, check the price. If it's convenient for you and if it's within your budget, go ahead and buy it. There's going to be a link below for some bubble wrap. You want to make sure that your printers are well packaged because at a certain point in, in my business, uh, there was you know a few weeks where I had slacked off with the bubble wrap and guess what? All those printers were damaged and I had to refund all of those printers because they did not have enough bubble wrap. You know, you want to use plenty of bubble wrap and when you think you think you've used enough add a little bit more all right so now on the flip side of that that's the past and now we're in the present uh, what I currently do is I currently don't sell as many printers I do it for this channel primarily because my business has evolved so what I do now is I ended up getting a 20 pack of boxes um, I think 18 18 by 16. Uh, I'll leave a link for, for those boxes I ended up buying as well uh, because it wasn't super expensive. If you really break down the cost for each box and you end up breaking down the cost of some bubble wrap uh, per printer, it's going to be way significantly lower than what they're going to charge you at UPS or FedEx. So you're still way below. So I'm giving you two different avenues and I'm telling you what I've done in the past that worked for me on a larger scale 
And now on a smaller scale, I am buying boxes just to make the process easier and so that I don't have to spend time you know, going out looking for boxes and that's just what I've chosen to do at this point in my life. Either way may work for you. You just have to really decide that but just know that you do have options with this and you can save yourself some money either way. So these are the boxes I ended up buying from Amazon and I will leave a link below for them. It comes in a 20 pack again and uh, I used one and they're okay. I'm gonna say they're okay quality. Um, if you want better quality, you're gonna have to spend more. This is just enough to get the printer from point A to point B. All right, so I share a lot of things like this in my ebook. Uh, so make sure that if you haven't gotten it already, click the link below. I'm very excited to be releasing all the updates and then there's gonna be another update later on this year. But basically, I'm taking what I already had in the ebook and doubling it and then hopefully I can add a little bit more actually towards the end of the year. So your support is greatly appreciated. I hope you've found this video to be helpful if you're new to reselling uh, on eBay, on Amazon, and primarily maybe you wanna get into the space of printers. Comment below, I wanna know who you are, and I wanna know how I can help you. I wanna see if I can do some more videos. What I do on a semi-regular basis is I go to Goodwills, show you what I did, what I bought the printers for, and then I bring you back and show you uh, what price I sold them on eBay. And I do have some sold printers if you are keeping up with the series. I will have to make an update video maybe next week. Also with this channel, I do a lot of printer reviews. That takes a large chunk of this channel printer repair, opinionated videos, if you should buy, you, my most popular video right now is whether you should buy the Epson EcoTank models, and then these types of videos. So I do, the channel does have, you know, a wide variety of different topics, uh, but there is a playlist, uh, there is a printer reselling section, and that is where you're gonna find more videos like this one. And also the printer reviews and the printer repair videos, they may help you out as well. Of course, this channel primarily focuses on the sale of the Best Printers Cleaning Kit, and of course I got to selling this product through reselling printers. My business ended up evolving to this point. So you never know what's gonna happen when you go down this road of selling printers. You may find yourself with something similar to what I'm doing or maybe something completely different where you end up finding a new business. A business that works better than printer reselling. That's what I was able to do. So hopefully you're able to do that as well. You really do want to start with the basics because if you understand the basics of this business, anything else, any other niche you want to branch off into, you're going to be an expert and you're going to have knowledge that other people normally would not have if they had not worked with printers previously. All right, that's really all I have for now. Thank you guys so much for watching and until next time. <laughs>